Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the sphenoid bone. Uh, the sphenoid bone is highlighted in green here. It's a pretty interesting bone. It's, it's back behind a lot of your facial bones and sort of within your skull. Um, we can really quickly just hide everything else so you can kind of get an idea of what the actual bone looks like. And there it is. These pieces of bone out here are actually on the exterior of your skull, just kind of near your temples. But other than that, the rest of this bone is deep within the skull. So the first two structures we're going to cover are the wings of the sphenoid bone. It has two wings, and it's not an exact science of exactly where these wings are, but this wing up here we'll call the lesser wing. And then this wing down here, we'll call the greater wing. All right, so lesser and greater. This is one I typically don't tag um, on my quizzes, but if you saw um, a mark maybe like this, I, I'd be looking for greater wing versus if you saw a mark maybe some X's up top here, I'd be looking for lesser wing as the answer. Let's go ahead and look at some other things here. So uh, the next structure we're gonna look at is called the cella tersica, and that actually means Turkish saddle. And that is sort of what it looks like. It looks like a saddle. So let me get the right view here. If you see this little depression here, it does look like a little saddle, sort of, if you use your imagination. That little saddle is where your pituitary gland sits, um, and the name of the structure is the cella tersica. Now, right next to the cella tersica, oh, you know what, and before I even do that, these aren't on the notes for our class, but just so you guys can see them. There are two pieces that are sort of a part of the cella tersica that you may see labeled in different photos you look at. And that is this structure here, which is called the posterior clinoid process. And then you have anterior clinoid processes. So if you ever see those labeled in a drawing, now you've seen them here as well. Uh, this next structure is really cool. You guys can see these two foramina. So here's one on the right and here's one on the left. If you look from the front, you can see them there as well in the back of the orbit. So let me go ahead and label that right here. That is your right optic foramen. And this is your left optic foramen. Now you can see those as well from inside the skull. There's your right optic foramen and your left. That is where your optic nerve travels and it's bringing sensory information from the retina of your eyes into your brain so you can process visual information. Now right next to those, so there it is, there's the optic foramen. Now if we turn the skull a bit, we see kind of this V shape, and I'm going to hide a few things. Let's hide this. Let's hide that. Even that doesn't quite, oh yeah, you can, you can see it. So um, it looks a little, looks slightly different in a real skull. I can't quite get the right angle, but if you look, we see almost like a, a, a greater than sign right here. I'm gonna draw a line in the middle here because this is actually two different structures. The structure on top is called the superior orbital fissure, and the structure on bottom is the inferior orbital fissure. 
now we have three foramina, it's actually six total, three on each side, that are quite difficult to see and oftentimes get confused. So let's try to find a good view. This is as good as any, I think, right here. So the names of these foramina are first the foramen rotundum, the foramen ovale, and the foramen spinosum. I'm going to go ahead and label them. So here's the foramen rotundum, the foramen ovale, which fortunately is an oval, and then the foramen spinosum, a tiny little foramen here. From medial to lateral, they go R, O, S. So if you want to take on a, a piece of paper and draw maybe a box, better yet, two boxes, and draw three circles kind of arranged like this, and from medial to lateral, name them R, sorry about my writing, O, S. And remember, it's medial to lateral, so on this side it would be R, O, S. Frame and rotundum, frame and ovale, and frame and spinosum. Three foramina, R, O, S, medial to lateral. Now, this next structure we've actually talked about before when we were talking about the carotid canal. It is right, I'm trying to get a nice view there. It's right here, and it is called the foramen lacerum on either side of the cella turcica. Now we only have a couple structures left here on this phenoid bone, and I've unfortunately removed things that. I would have rather not have, so I'm going to add them back in and hide these vertebrae again. And now we're looking back here, almost at a posterior view of your hard and soft palate, or of your hard palate rather, um, and we can see, let's remove this too, we can see a few structures here on the bottom. Here's your sphenoid bone. Let's go ahead and hide everything else for a second. We can see a few different things. Here is your medial pterygoid plate. <clears throat> and your lateral pterygoid plate. So medial, and there's, there's two of them, medial pterygoid plates and then lateral pterygoid plate. And you guys, that is it. Sphenoid bone. Thank you.